Okay, so we are going to uh, 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 have a conversation about my experience with uh, our latest, greatest uh, thing, uh, ballerina. And uh, I'm going to explain to you uh, how to learn and contribute uh, to this. So in terms of a, a small outline of uh, what I'm going to talk to you uh, in the next 30 minutes, um, first of all, I'll explain like uh, what this is, uh, who it was made for, uh, why do you need to be interested in uh, ballerina. And uh, after that, I will be then explaining what motivated me uh, to learn uh, this. Of course, I'm working for WSO2, but uh, I'm, I'm leaving that uh, bit aside. Uh, considering myself as an outsider, because I, I also happen to be uh, working on lots of uh, customer projects. I know some of you here have been working with you for some time. Uh, so in this context, uh, if I was asked uh, to use uh, this uh, capability of ours for one of your projects, uh, what would be my approach? That's what I'm going to talk to you about. And then uh, uh, afterwards, I'm, I'm going to explain to you how you can contribute uh, to this. And um, hopefully it's, it's going to be interesting. And then we will have a follow-up after this. There's a, a session that my colleagues will be running out uh, uh, soon after, like a BOF, uh, for anyone who is interested uh, to get uh, cracking on coding things, learning about ballerina, contributing uh, to improvements and all of these things. And they'll be here um, soon after this talk uh, to get that going. So what this is, so we've been having lots of conversations, uh, lots of uh, interesting talks throughout this conference. I think by now most of you know what ballerina is, but I'll just do a quick uh, recap. Uh, so it's a general purpose, uh, concurrent and strongly typed programming uh, language. What does that mean? Um, you can use ballerina to do many things. Uh, you can use it for uh, concurrent applications uh, to build uh, great things, but this is also uh, very much focused on enterprise integration. Uh, and, and then uh, we've been doing enterprise integration for the last uh, 12 or so years in this company. And um, we've been having a syntax uh, on our ESB, basically, which was XML based. And we know that it is not that easy uh, for someone to deal with XML or the beautiful tools that we have are, are also I mean, quite good, but, but it's, it's not the best uh, possibility in this new and evolving world. So Ballerina is also now graphical. Uh, you, 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 you get to interact with what you build. Uh, you get sequence diagrams, and, and it's, it's more interactive. It's, it's more um, engaging. So this is what we are going to see. So uh, if I sum all of that up, this is a programming language for the uh, networked world. What does that mean? So uh, modern uh, uh, integration uh, is seen as something that you will use to connect to something else, right? Uh, uh, the future of the world is believed to be a connection of different things. If, you, if you've been listening to the keynotes uh, that we, uh, we had yesterday, for instance, uh, the idea of the future of these kinds of capabilities, integration, API management, uh, Internet of Things, identity, um, uh, you name it. Uh, it's, it's all about uh, being able to either connect people to systems or systems to systems, um, any kind of thing to any kind of other thing. So it's all about integration. It's all about connectivity. It's, it's all about bringing everything together. Uh, so the networked world is fortunately, unfortunately, the future. <laughs> Uh, that we are all going to be living in. And uh, Ballerina is a language designed for this. That's, that's how I would sum up all of those points uh, that we have on our website, all of what my colleagues have been saying throughout. So this is why it was interesting. Now, a language uh, built for the uh, networked world won't be appealing if it's not built uh, for the programmers, because these are the guys who are going to uh, uh, make use of these technologies, build great integrations, and so on and so forth. Now, in the past, uh, people like uh, this guy on the, the slide uh, were coming from a very, um, you know, like uh, maybe a background of uh, developing things, knowing languages like Java, C, C++, um, C Sharp, uh, VB.NET, and, and things like that, or VB before.NET. Uh, things like that, and or, or PHP programmers, JavaScript programmers, people who know to build websites, programmers, right? People who know a language and who can program. 
Now, uh, when you present an enterprise integration bus, uh, so the, uh, sorry, the enterprise service bus, or an enterprise integration capability uh, to a community of guys like this, um, uh, if they were architects, they would love it. Uh, talking in design patterns, blocks, and things like that. If there were people who know to build websites throughout their whole life, and they were just it's given this new thing and said, you know, if you want to extend your website to also connect to a, another software as a service application, you can use this uh, ESB or API gateway. They're going, to go, wow, what's this? Uh, there are lots of different things. I, I, I haven't worked with this kind of a thing in my entire um, past. Um, though I know to build websites, I don't know how to use this, right? For them, uh, this is like a continuation of what they've been doing, uh, building websites in JavaScript and HTML. Okay, that's one audience. Then there are other audiences. I, um, uh, so most of you here are, are roughly my age or maybe a little older, a little younger likewise, right? But um, I do have uh, one of my uh, uh, elder uh, brothers uh, who has a small child who, who, is, who is being uh, taught uh, uh, programming at a very young age. Now this is about a six, seven, eight-year-old uh, kid. And now they are being taught to program. Why are they being taught to program in school? You know, they are not writing very complicated programs. They are not doing enterprise integration at this age, okay? Uh, but just like they used to learn math in school, just like they used to learn to read books in school, nowadays uh, children are being introduced uh, to things like how to program things, how to, how to, how to connect um, or, or, or write small applications. Why is this? Because there is lots of applications running on mobile phones. In a keynote, uh, I think Tyler was explaining, there are, I think, 200,000 or something software as a service applications. That number is only going to grow. It's going to be millions. It's going to be billions. I don't know. So there are lots of people uh, who are not traditional programmers who are now interested in doing a little bit of programming or doing a little bit of integrating or doing a bit of, um, I don't know, like connecting different systems to each other. Like maybe uh, when you are buying a, uh, um, you know, something for your home, home improvement, maybe a, a bulb or something like that, right? You just you should plug it. In the future, if it's an IoT-enabled bulb, you might be looking at programming that thing. That's what people say. So analysts have come up with a term called citizen integrate. I really don't know what's that going to be. but. Uh, this is the kind of uh, evolution that, that this world is going through right now. Like, People are, are getting more and more involved in, in um, the kind of integration capabilities or in, in, in the kind of things that we used to do in the past, where architects used to go and present a solution, and a team would build something. Now, um, it, it is, I think, still the way something would happen. But in the future, there may be individuals who will just walk up and download something off the internet, do some modifications, install it, and run it. That's what they're looking at. So that's where the world is moving. So Ballerina is designed for the people like that. So what was my motivation to learn Ballerina? Now, uh, I was being brainwashed uh, by the great many things it can do. Uh, and and uh, my colleagues uh, uh, came up with incentives to you know, like, uh, make me uh, learn this and come back with feedback. <laughs> Uh, we had hackathons that we ran internally inside the company, and there was a hackathon that was also run externally, uh, getting people to be involved and contribute and so on and so forth. But my motivation was not exactly that. Uh, my motivation was uh, a few things, because uh, first of all, as I said, uh, I'm also qualifying this uh, because I need to remove the bias. When I got this topic, honestly, I went and uh, spoke to Asanka, who gave me, he's my boss, uh, so uh, explained to him, you know, I am from WSO2, I cannot just uh, say I'm, I'm not motivated to use Ballerina, or I am motivated to use Ballerina for these reasons, because I am obviously coming with a background. Uh, but, but then uh, there is a bit that is important to me as a person working with customers, as I told you before, because uh, this is easy to learn, this is easy to code, so when people come and tell me, uh, I have been spending three months uh, to build an ESB platform. Uh, do you think it's great? And I'm, I'm listening. And, and then they say, OK, I, I, I've had all of these kinds of uh, challenges in integration testing and doing all of these things. Do you know a better way of doing that? I'm, I'm still listening. And, and it, it, it goes on like that. And now with Ballerina, I can give them hope. I can tell them that you can actually learn and code and do things in Ballerina much, much faster 
than what you have been doing in the past. Now, one of, some of the weaknesses that are ESB platforms and things like that, has, it, they're great products by all means, right? Uh, don't, don't take me wrong. Um, so, uh, but the ability to try out something uh, involves you connecting different systems together. There is really no uh, debugging capability, just like what you get with Java. Uh, so when you are writing a small Java program, or any other language for that purpose, right? if you are not sure how it works, as a programmer, I would write a main method, invoke my um, you know, operation, take a look at the inputs and outputs, and I know what it would do. That's easy enough. So if, if everything else fails, if I have no way of debugging it, I have this easy approach. Now, with an ESB, there is nothing like that. I have to connect different systems to it. I had to expect some outputs to come out of it, or I had to trust someone who developed a prototype or gave me some payloads as inputs and outputs, and I have to use this to validate whether I did the right thing. Ballerina is like a language, so you can actually write like a main method and test it very easily. That's the kind of convenience that you get with a language, which you don't get with an ESB. Uh, that's one thing. And, and then uh, about the simplicity to code. Now, uh, if you are given an integration uh, problem that you want to do a file, uh, like a, a file transfer or an ETL process, and you are told to build that ETL process using Java or C Sharp or PHP, uh, PHP is, I think, better, uh, and say, design an ETL process uh, using the LAMP stack. You get Linux, you get the Apache server, you get a MySQL database, and you get PHP, and you write everything in PHP. How hard is it to do that? Because uh, you got to handle all these kinds of MySQL error messages, statuses, everything. Uh, you need to uh, design uh, for a system that is eventually available, unavailable, fails, randomly, likewise, right? There are lots of things to consider and lots of error handling to be developed, first of all. Then different things to be written so that you can interact with all of these things and so on and so forth. Now, Ballerina uh, cuts down all of that. So the amount of PHP code that you would write or Java code or C Sharp code that you would write might be... 100 lines. In Ballerina, about two or three lines. So that's the kind of, when I say it's easy to code, that's what I mean. So it's, it's uh, partly easy to learn because of that reason. It's easy to code because of that reason. And it is easy to test. It is easy to try out because it's a language and you get all of the benefits. So that was one big motivation. The second thing is, uh, it is designed for the right kind of thing. Now, uh, you, can, you can kind of say that um, you can run an integration platform. Uh, on containers, or you can run this, I don't know, even perhaps on a Lambda uh, environment, you write maybe a wrapper process, and a small thing like Camel will fit in, definitely fit in, I think, uh, Amazon's Lambda. You can write a Node.js wrapper around it. You can start up the Camel instance, and um, there we have, you have a small ESB running on serverless environment, right? Uh, okay, uh, but that's, that's not quite the thing. Now, uh, if you wanted to reboot Camel, it's a, it's a, few, maybe not a second, but it's still going to take something closer to a second, or maybe a little more than that, at least, um, to bring it up, right? Uh, and uh, if you're, if you're um, looking at provisioning all of the other things that Camel needs to run, it's going to take a little bit more than that for it to be available uh, and, and functioning. Ballerina uh, starts up in milliseconds, few milliseconds. And this is really quick. Uh, if you, uh, therefore, the keynotes we were explaining, uh, it's so quick that the garbage collector of Java is slower than rebooting Ballerina. So you you have a situation where you can keep running a process uh, for some time, and once it's eventually coming to a situation where it needs to now garbage collect, you can destroy the instance, go with a new instance because it's that quick. So serverless compute or functions as a service, what some people call it, are designed for things that run really, really fast, and things that are built for exactly what they're doing, and you don't need to be running them uh, every, um, you know, like uh, hourly or something like that. You would run it on a trigger basis, that you will have a requirement coming in, some set of files, an event or something like that, or a process being triggered, and you will start up some serverless instances uh, to deal with that re requirement, or you scale it up based on your need, and once the need goes away, you need to stop everything. Or when the need comes back again, you need to bring up everything. So you need that kind of agility in terms of running, scaling, stopping, managing, everything. So Ballerina is actually designed for that 
kind of requirement. So it's not just serverless. You are looking at uh, uh, things beyond serverless, like service uh, mesh architectures. This is great for all of that. It, it just works at that scale. So it's, it's not like a monolithic heavyweight product. It's like a microservice that's designed for a micro scale uh, requirement. But it also does everything that an ESB can do for you. So that is the benefit. So that's point two. And third thing, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Because I really, honestly, I really haven't had experience with something quite like Ballerina in the past. I mean, you all need to try it as well. Because Ballerina is not the regular kind of programming language. And it's not the kind of like uh, ESB or API Gateway or something like that. It's in between. Uh, it, it, it allows you to program things just like you would program in, a, in Java or C Sharp or PHP, something like that. But it allows you to program integrations. It allows you to program uh, connections between different applications. And uh, just like you write code. So let's see. Now, uh, uh, serverless. Uh, serverless is an interesting concept. Uh, so serverless is not exactly uh, throwing away the server uh, into a trash can and saying, you know, I, I don't have servers anymore. I am, I am running uh, with uh, zero infrastructure. Some people actually present serverless like that, but that's not actually the case. The actual case is, you know, you are running in a very constrained pool of resources, and you're now looking at a different, uh, <laughs> you know, swimming pool <laughs> uh, for you to run. Because this is like um, a very constrained environment now being scaled uh, to an environment that is not constrained. Uh, that's the way some people see serverless. Because serverless allows you to go beyond traditional boundaries of VMs. VM uh, sets an expectation saying that this is as much as a server can go. This is as much as this can do. So you would size this, or you would have a way this scale up. You can use uh, cloud uh, environments, and so on and so forth. But serverless is something completely uh, beyond that. Uh, it's like a new, uh, enor like an enormous amount of resources, potentially, uh, that is available to you. There is really no competition for resources in your environment, because you scale as and when you want exactly in the way you want to do it. So it gives you a lot of flexibility from an infrastructure point of view. So how can you uh, basically make use of that infrastructure? Now, learning Ballerina is not that hard. So if you want to get started with something like that, so you get all of this benefit. Someone comes and tells you, OK, tomorrow uh, we are going to try out Lambda, uh, or we are going to try out a serverless infrastructure or someone, you, you can say, yeah, fine, I'm ready for it. I know Ballerina. I can, I can go and run this. But how can you do it? Uh, so first of all, you need to download a package that, that comes with something called Tools Plus Runtime. Uh, we are in the habit of giving you everything always. So you get Ballerina, the, uh, the runtime, the tools that you need to run, the composer. Uh, there is a suit where you can run integration tests. You get all of that. Uh, that's available as a package. So if you want to start the composer, uh, you would extract this archive. And uh, you would go to the bin folder and, and then start running the composer. And once you start it up, um, everything that you program is now browser-based. So if your friend is running Ballerina for you somewhere, and he has started up the composer, you can actually access his instance. And you can even improve his code. And if you are a team, not just you and your friend, if you are a team of people, you can have a shared ballerina environment where you collaboratively build on. So that is the idea of the way the composer works. We have got lots of templates. So even if you are completely new uh, and, and um, completely, you know, uh, you have had no exposure to this uh, whatsoever, you can start with the Hello World, or you can start with one, what we call an echo service sample. We got these templates on the composer. But if you want to try something little more than that, you also can um, try out something like, you know, like a routing services example, which is like a template, uh, or a RESTful service template to build some real RESTful web service, likewise. So these go from very basic things uh, to some things that are a little more complicated. And my colleagues are planning to ex extend this with many more templates where you can save off the internet and uh, try it out by yourself. So its idea is. You will uh, learn what the concepts are. 
uh, you will be familiar with how to make use of Ballerina as a programming language. But when you come to develop something, just like you can save off you know, C Sharp examples uh, from uh, you know, websites, or you, you can use Stack Overflow to Google and search and then get things, Ballerina will have the equivalent. So you will have templates available, examples that people have done, like Git repositories with examples, things like that. So we are doing all of the good things. And then you can make use of these things and program much faster. So if I just explain to you uh, what the composer looks like, this is a screenshot that I took. Uh, it has many things. It, it, it's, it's, it's got this like canvas where you can drag and drop and develop things. Uh, you can click this button here. That will take you to the source code view. Uh, you can also import files and do many things. And you also get a, you know, a set of uh, like a palette of um, uh, very many things that you can try out. So you get a, it's just like a, um, uh, a minimum version of Visual Studio running on a browser. So if I take a look at the routing services template, I said it's a little bit uh, advanced uh, from an example's point of view. This is what it would look like. So Ballerina uh, breaks down um, functionality and encapsulates them uh, as blocks. So if I am building an integration that involves many systems, now assuming I'm a little bit comfortable programming in this, right? assume that I am connecting to multiple things, like two, three databases, different files, uh, different services likewise. I will see this as a sequence diagram. I get this view because um, um, it's, it's then convenient for me to uh, kind of understand how the interactions are. Now with traditional programming, you don't really get a sequence diagram. Somebody else draws this for you. But uh, when we were at customers or when we do code reviews, we always understand that if you're, if, if you're specifically doing enterprise integration, unless there is like a flow diagram, unless someone can draw a diagram that explains how systems interact with each other, you really cannot uh, explain um, what are the uh, use cases or, or, or try to understand how they work together, right? So Ballerina reduces the amount of time uh, that you need to be presenting, uh, uh, like uh, you know, spending on a whiteboard and spending on your computer. Uh, so it allows you to conveniently switch between source view and this view, where you get the sequence diagrams. So when you are collaborating with people, you can you can you can have blocks like I'm building this thing. Somebody else is building another reusable block in in this, which you can import, uh, and and so on and so forth. And you can finally get together, uh, project this on uh, on a large screen with your team, and then then start discussing about the sequence. Now, how cool is that? Because if you did not have that, somebody else <laughs> having a role of an architect will be sitting there looking at what you're programming or, or talking to you about what you need to be programming and drawing a diagram, right? So he's, he's just drawing a diagram. So we are automating that role uh, with this editor. But in effect, what you get is the kind of convenience of, of understanding exactly what your program does. So what systems are your endpoints? What are your inputs? What are your outputs? Um, what is the exact sequence of how these work? And when you set breakpoints and things like that, uh, which you can do, you can debug this, uh, you can actually see uh, the calls going from one breakpoint to another, like on this system, on that system. Like This is just one line because it's an endpoint. This also can have another block like here, uh, if there's an interaction of such sort. So you can see the breakpoint switching and things like that. It's, it's very interactive and very convenient. Programming view. Uh, you get the source code written down uh, for that sequence diagram. You get the exact same thing written here. So if you want to tweak something, you can very easily do that as well. So that's the kind of convenience. So I got more examples. Um, actually, uh, there is a, a set of uh, examples that we have available online as well. Uh, there is this link, Barely, uh, 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 our, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the main page. Uh, if you if, if you go to this link and you select the user docs and then select uh, by example, uh, you will see a set of examples that we've written out for various kinds of uh, aspects of how the language works. So if you want to see how to do a loop or how to connect to a system or something like that, uh, just visit this link. You will get, I, I don't know, about 20, 30 at least or more maybe right now uh, examples. Plus, they will be building this into, I think, hundreds potentially or thousands maybe of examples in the future. You can copy this to the clipboard. Uh, you can um, uh, make a new uh, 
project and import it into the, the editor, the composer. Uh, and um, you can basically paste that in uh, source view, and then you can switch to the, the sequence view. And it's, it's very convenient. Uh, this is one of the examples that shows uh, JSON to XML conversion. So if you just follow, uh, you can see the JSON coming in here. Uh, there is a, uh, we are setting some options for JSON. That's that standard in the way it works. Uh, and, and then JSON to XML conversion, mind you, is one line. Just one line. Because the language understands what JSON is, the language understands what XML is. And you can do like a typecast conversion. Uh, which you can do in programming, like if you want to convert like an integer to a long, or a, uh, you, you, you wanted to pass a string and then get an um, uh, integer out of it, kind of a thing. You can do exactly the same thing between XML and JSON. If you have like a basic template, if you want to do that kind of a transformation, that's possible as well. Uh, it's, it's very convenient because this language is designed uh, for integration. OK, I can go on and on <laughs> explaining uh, uh, different things. but. I thought there are a few things that might be quite interesting, like uh, in terms of interacting with this language, because things that I found convenient. Like if you do uh, function f1, you will actually get that list of examples. It will take you to that page. Um, you can also um, uh, use something called a compact view. So if you write a very large ballerina program, you can expand and contract the kind of things that you see on a sequence diagram. That's very convenient. Uh, it makes things easy to read. Uh, you can also fold and expand the source code in the source view, just like you can do on many other editors. Uh, that's something interesting. Uh, there are previews, and you can jump to source if you want to toggle the view. Likewise, you can set breakpoints in the source view. That's more convenient than a graphical view sometimes if you want to get the program aspect of it. Or if you want to see the sequence aspect of breakpoints, you can go to the graphical view. And Ballerina also supports things like Swagger. Uh, so you can import uh, Swagger uh, specifications. Uh, you can also uh, develop a uh, HTTP interface. Press this button. It's not that clear. It produces Swagger out of it. So if you wanted to design a Swagger specification right, for the REST APIs that you have, you can actually use this to do it in about five minutes, because you just design the flow of it, click that button, Swagger comes out of it. And uh, you can then publish it on your API gateway. How cool is that? So that, these are the kinds of things that you can use this for. Uh, and re realistically, if you're using it to actually build integrations, this makes it a lot convenient for you. Because most of the things that were very manual and uh, you know, like not very well connected are now all possible as a part of uh, uh, this capability that we have. Uh, this is basically the, what Swagger looks like when you click that button. And uh, lastly, how can you contribute to Ballerina? So you can uh, interact with the Ballerina team or the community over Stack Overflow. Uh, it's quite functional. Just do go, uh, Google search, uh, and then you will see lots of interactions on Stack Overflow. Uh, we have a Slack channel. Uh, if you want to interact with the, the team who is building the language, because it's currently not uh, 9.5, now we're working on uh, 9.6. It's not 1.0 yet, so there's a lot of work going on. So if you want to get some advice uh, or if you want to interact with the team, we have this channel. It's open for anybody. Anybody can join this. Uh, there is a mailing list. If you want to, if you are like more traditional uh, in the way you interact, uh, you can send an email. Uh, they'll generally respond very quickly. There's a community involved in this, so there are lots of people on it. There's a GitHub project. If you want to fork the project, expand it uh, with your own things, contribute back as a pull request, feel free. That's a possibility. Uh, on Git, we ba basically have issues. Uh, we follow standard conventions on Git, so if you want to follow issues or things like that, improvements, you can suggest. And you can see people working on them. You can contribute to them, likewise. Uh, that's, that's something that you can do. And we record new features and issues all on GitHub. So it's very transparent. You can see the evolution of the language just by visiting this page, uh, historically and also in the future. Uh, there are people writing different IDEs. One thing really cool is you saw the browser-based IDE. But we got an IDE, like a framework, uh, which people have used to build the same experience on different IDEs, like Visual Studio, IntelliJ. Um, you know, uh, and, and so and so forth. There are many other uh, uh, versions of the browser-based view that you get. Uh, 
So if you also want to try out something like that, if you want to build your own uh, experience around this language, if you are really, really into it, there is this whole project about IDE support in Ballerina, for example. It's quite interesting. Uh, you can also contribute by uh, trying out connectors or being a beta tester, introducing your own connectors to it, expanding what it has, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of possibility. There are more tracks <laughs> that will follow. And um, soon after this, uh, there is a BOF that my colleagues will now get going with. And uh, hope that will be interesting too. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Anything at all? If, um, I'm sorry I didn't ask. Yeah. Uh, going back to the root sequence example that you gave, uh, mm -hmm. considering parallelism and having multiple instances of the services that you actually call, uh, how would you do like load balancing and uh, uh, service discovery and yeah. uh, traceability if you don't know like if you spawn up like several instances of the same uh, same service that you call? Yeah, so scalability is just like you would scale any other, uh, you know, like a, a service or mostly this is like a microservice. Uh, so you will have uh, many copies of the same thing and a load balancing uh, setup would be just like a traditional load balancer or a service mesh kind of an architecture where you distribute the load likewise. So the standard patterns are still applicable for this. Now, Do you have anything if you've been to the Yeah, yeah we have, yes. Uh, so this uh, basically uh, provides you some analytics and, and things like that, which you can extract out of it. Now the language is 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 fairly basic, um, as you can see, it's designed uh, for convenience. But uh, Ballerina allows you to annotate things and and um, uh, you know like extract information out of it and, and do many things. And WSO2 is also interested in taking this to the uh, the second stage like uh, by introducing uh, uh, surveillance capability around these things uh, so people can actually understand what processes are running where and um, how are they being recycled and so and so forth, reused and everything. Uh, so we are investing heavily on that entire ecosystem aspect. And uh, we are also, in the future, uh, going to make our products like API Gateway and uh, Enterprise Integrator based on this. So uh, this is not just about the convenience that you get as a person programming. That was purely my focus. But when you deploy uh, this in a production environment, Ballerina is production grade. It gives you all of the monitoring capabilities. It gives you all of the governance capabilities and, and the other scalability aspects around it, uh, which allows you to uh, run them in uh, many containers, integrate very well with like, things like Kubernetes uh, or OpenShift and, and so on and so forth, or, or serverless infrastructure for that purpose very well. More questions? No more questions? OK, I'm going to leave you with my colleague Aziz, uh, who is going to now run the, the BOF session. Uh, this is, yeah, Aziz is ready in a minute, yeah.